Bismillah. Today we'll think about uh, thankfulness and gratitude. Um, so we, as usual, we'll start with uh, Ibn Arabi's poem. And his po these are the two chapters on thankfulness and abandoning thankfulness. And he will, he starts each of these chapters with poems. And this poem here, uh, thankfulness is twofold. A thankfulness for desires fulfilled and one for a company of helpers. This first is based on the spirit and the second is based on the organic body. So this desire filled is what we usually think about with uh, thankfulness and, and blessing. Is that something that we wanted, we get. But the other one, the company of helpers, very interesting, there's, um, these are the company of people who aid one another. And this rifada, uh, was something that the Quraysh used to do in the time of ignorance, because as uh, Mecca was always a, a pilgrimage site, for the purpose of pur purchasing for the pilgrims wheat and raisins. And they would gather all their money together. They collected a great sum. And this was in the days of assembling the pilgrims. And they continued to feed the people until the end of those days. So this is a group of people aiding one another and facilitating the pilgrimage. So thankfulness is twofold, a thankfulness for desires filled and one for a company of helpers. This first is based on the spirit and the second is based on the organic body. So thankfulness for the company of helpers provides me its abundance of blessing and the thankfulness, the desires fulfilled, the dislike put to a far remove has is is like the negation of what they falsely ascribe to him, the one has. So we have to unpack that a little bit. So the desires filled uh, also mean fouls, also means things that you don't like being put away from you. And so that's how it's like the negation that the one has, because the things that, that, that God does not want attributed get thrown far away in tanzi or in transcendence. So the thankfulness the desires fulfilled has is fenced in and constricted by one's goal, while the thankfulness the company of helpers has flows onward without end. So this is what we're looking at now, this, the thankfulness of the company of helpers, which flows on without end. Now, let's get a few definitions going in here. With uh, this chapter, Ibn Arabi begins the chapter after this poem, with uh, the numbers of degrees of shukr, of thankfulness. And he says there are 520, 551, uh, 1221, 1251. And what he's trying to do with us, with these numbers, is, is to tell us that we need to look at the other combinations of these letters in order to understand what the word shukr, thankfulness, is. So one combination of letters is kasher, and kasher is when you expose or disclose something. And another one is shirk, this kind of bad word shirk, the partner. And sharaka is to share or to co-partner with others. So shukr has an element of exposing and disclosing, and has an element of shirk, has co-partnerships. And the, the first element of shirk we see down at the bottom in the, the Luqman's advice to his child. This is from Quran, thank me and your parents. So you see that there's a co-partnership in here. The, the, the party getting thanked is two. There's one which is God and there's one which is the parents. So shukr, thankfulness. So indeed, God is thankful, all-knowing. So we begin with God is thankful, all-knowing. And this is shakir. And then also from Quran, indeed, our cherisher is forgiving, intensely thankful. So God is thankful, shakir, and intensely thankful. And then Ibn Arabi will use this next verse throughout. If you are thankful, I will give more. If you are thankful, I will give more. So those are the, 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 we need to understand intensely thankful, the giving more, and the sharing of thanks, and this company of, help, of helpers. So let me, let's go to our next slide. 
but let me also check, make sure everything is okay on this end. Yeah. Yeah, inshallah. Okay, good. And so our next screen. So we've looked at the intensely thankful, the company of helpers, the sharing of thanks, and we've looked at the, if you, if you thank me, I will give more. So here we'll look at another verse and pull out three different key insights here that we need to, we need to be finding in these verses. Oh, David, we made you a Khalifa in the earth. Khalifa is from Min Khalfa. So that is from behind. So a Khalifa is the one that the one acts from behind. So when you see the Khalifa doing something, you're seeing God doing something behind this Khalifa. And then, so judge between the people by Haq. And so we'll be looking at the idea of Haq, of truth. And do not follow Hawa or Hawan, your lower self, for it will lead, mislead you from a way of God, a Sabil Allah. So Hawan, you're this lower self. And what the lower self does is leads us away from the sabil, the way of God. So this way of God, we're trying to look at how this way of God works. And the way of God, we'll see it, we see it here. They worked for him as he willed, making arches, images, basins as large as reservoirs, and cooking cauldrons fixed in their places. So we're describing here the langar, of the, the temple of, of David. So work family of David and with thanks, but few of my creatures are intensely thankful. So intensely thankful. We have thankful and intensely thankful. And Ibn Arabi tells us that the intensely thankful is used when the entire part of you is integrated, when all of your limbs and all of your thinking processes and all your sensory faculties are all working together, integrated, then you are doing something for which intense thankfulness will be uh, brought about. So God will be intensely thankful for your integrated activity, where, where your senses and your thoughts and your limbs, everything is working together as an integrated whole. And intensely thankful also works for and goes to the company of helpers. So when a group is all together, and Ibn Arabi talks about the image of shoulder to shoulder, when you're all working or praying shoulder to shoulder, you form this strong integral whole, which is doing things for which Allah is intensely thankful. So Ibn Arabi says this shoulder to shoulder is when we're all working together and it happens in the person as well when the whole body is working together. So this plurality uh, calls forth intense, full, intense thankfulness from the divine. And when the people are shoulder to shoulder working in the langa, working to feed, working to do something to make this work, uh, this is called the sabil of Allah the way of God. And God is intensely thankful for when this company of helpers, when we are shoulder to shoulder working to do things that bring out this way of God. And in a sense, we can see what it doesn't happen when the lower selves are the ones which are, are leading. When the lower selves are leading, uh, then you get tyranny, you get, uh, narcissism, you get uh, capricious uh, uh, application of law and so on. So we're looking at what's not the lower self, which is the higher self, which is working together in a company in order to bring forth a way of God. Okay. And I have to move this here a little bit. So this, where does this way of God 
where are these companies of, of helpers? So I wanted to look at this, where are the company of helpers and how are we shoulder to shoulder and how are we integrated and whole? And there's this passage here, if Penelope has us learn, may you learn my sincere friend, my sibling, that the earth of your body is the true vast earth, the one which the true told you to worship who in her. This is where he told you to worship him in his earth only as long as your spirit lives in the earth of your body. So when he separates from her, tasking slides off of you with your body being in the earth buried in her. Then you will learn that the earth is only your body. And he made her vast since she is vast enough for who? For the senses and the meanings which are not found except in this bodily human earth. So this is, and, and right now there's, I understand there's an issue in Sri Lanka with cremation and things like that and, and Muslims uh, in that, in the subcontinent having uh, uh, tremendous concerted efforts against them. Uh, but the, for Ibn Arabi, it's enough to know that if one particle of you is buried in the earth or in the earth, um, then that's considered buried in the earth. And so um, whatever way that the, whatever happens to the body afterwards, um, this being in the earth is, a, is where you are now grounded in the vast earth of God. And this is where we are told to go into this place and worship God. Because when we are in the earth and our spirit is released, then we are able to worship God completely, automatically, dhati, or essentially. And this goes also back to this womb concept, because the, our womb relations are not just the ones uh, who seem to be close to us or look like us. Um, we have here on the land here, there'll be clusters of trees where there'll be a white pinyon tree, very old, white pine tree, and then other pine trees, and a cedar will be there, and then a juniper comes in. And so this root system that they make is completely intricate, interacting. Uh, the ramification is dense and abundant, and it's not uh, one species, it's whatever is there. And these root systems also go for very, very long areas. We've heard about the root systems of aspens, uh, how they go for miles and just uh, these long, long distances. And so this, the womb relationships of ours are not just the people who are white pines like us or cedar trees like us. They are going to be from all over the place of, and in variety and all over the place in distance. And so our womb relations also, the ones that are sustaining us, are ones that are, not, are walking in the earth now and ones that are also buried in the earth. And this brings the, this, the help that the, that the ones buried in the earth give. Ibn Arabi talks about the sunnah of the, of the proclamation of the dead. When we're taking the dead to the gravesite, uh, you call the person their name and say, slave of God. And then you say, child of, and you name the mother, slave of God. So you're identified when you're going to the grave by your mother. Whereas in the rest of your life, you've been identified by your father. And so you're always the daughter of so-and-so, your father. You're the son of your father. But here on the way to the grave, you are a slave of God, child of your mother, slave of God. And so you and your mother are given the names of complete worship, obodia. So you are given, you are in complete worship. And this is, when we are alive, we usually have a very mixed amount of worship. Our bodies are worshiping God all the time, but ourselves are not necessarily worshiping God all the time. But when we're on the way to the grave, our mother is called as a slave of God. We are called as a slave of God. And this, uh, Ibn Arabi tells us, uh, he learned about this with the, with the, uh, the, the story that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
course, he had the most time with his family, like, you know, like FaceTime with his family. And so they're the ones who, in a sense, got the most out of him. But then also the men in the society could see him often. Uh, but the women in society uh, would tell him that uh, we don't get enough time with you. And, and so he said, well, we'll make a time every a regular time when we'll meet and it will be just for the women who have questions and so the women would gather and ask him questions and one of them one of the gatherings they had someone said i have three children who have died um, and he says they have made your way to the garden and then someone said now i have two children who have died and he says they have made your way to the garden and Ibn Arabi says, you know, of course, the conventional ulama want to stop it there and call about children who die when they're very young and so on. But Ibn Arabi says, this is clear where this is going. The relationship to your womb is one that gives the womb this blessing of the garden. And so whatever age the child is who dies, uh, adult child or adult or anything, uh, and how many number it is, uh, this is for the mother the blessing of the path that goes to the garden. So this womb relationship is the one which helps us cross the bridge of life. And so the mother helps you cross the bridge of life. And, and then when you die and your mother is still alive, that is, that is giving her bridge a, an extension to the gates of the garden. Let me see. And so uh, in a minute, let's we'll have, I'll ask Baki and Nora to, to sing this one, this Ilahi here. Um, now I do have, uh, for, for those who are working with their, their brains, a thesis sentence. Everything I'm trying to say and putting together all of Ibn Arabi's passages here uh, can be put into this thesis sentence. Um, and I'll see if I can read it and then we can look at it. Okay, the thesis sentence then, if for those who can work this way. God is intensely thankful for the integrated person and the company of helpers, perfect humanity, as Sheikh Noor Lex Hickson says, behind whom he acts, so that's the Khalifa, behind whom he acts, so that they do more, and that's the thank me and I will give you more, so that they will do more along his way, the Sabil Allah, the way of God extending aid while exposing, and that's kasher as, a, as another definition of shukr, while exposing that it is God who gives in a co-partnership, so this is shirk and sharaka, while they are walking or buried in the earth, their souls having crossed the bridge of this world, which is the vast earth, the slide before, which is their body. God proceeding along the way closer to you than the root vein. And we'll look at the jugular in a moment. So this huck, uh, how do you thank God with huck, with the true thankfulness, the true rightfully deserved thankfulness? O Moses, a revelation came to Moses. O Moses, thank me with the rightfully due thankfulness. Moses said, but who has the capacity to do so? He said, O Moses, when you see the blessing as coming from me, you have thanked me with the rightfully due thankfulness. This is the state of the one who sees the blessing as coming from him. And Ibn Arabi, right after that passage, says this, and one of the blessings of his, of his to his creature is where he makes you prosperous to give abundantly of whatever blessing from God you have to the needy ones among his creatures. You give to them with the hand of the true, not from your own hand. Then they are looked at, then they are looking at that blessed goodness, and the blessing is their seeing that expenditure as coming from God, with God's good pleasure. So then they are included in the company of those who thank God with rightfully due thanks. And this is the highest thankfulness there is in the thankful ones. This is so easy for the Arafin, uh, 
who have shed their own characteristics by referencing the matters back to God's doing. Okay, so if we could have this beautiful Elahi now. I'll go ahead and put it back up. You want us to sing now? Yes, please do. In the cradle the fresh and of the beautiful one I love, all dirty souls I love, joining and in love. Thank you. Let's take a minute. I was telling Baki, I first heard that, uh, that Ilahi when I came to the Darga, I guess the first time, and at the banquet at the, on the bench were Sheikh Afaria, Sheikh Amina, <clears throat> and uh, Ali Rahman, and Wali was there. And above them, they have the stained glass calligraphy for Maryam, uh, Mother Mary, and Fatima, Mother Fatima, and we're thinking Khatija, but I have to see if Mother Khatija, Mother of the Faithful, if that's correct, let me know. So, so we were talking about this. So the, the child, whatever age, uh, who's being brought to the grave, the slave of God, a uh, child of the mother, slave of God, 
uh, and the bridge that goes then to the gates of the garden. And so this gate uh, comes out in this vision that Ibn Arabi has. And this is also then from this, this, the same two chapters. Ibn Arabi writes about a, a rare vision from a fountain of grace. Okay. Um, let me see if I can, um, just a second. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, this vision that Ibn Arabi has, this issue of about where to attribute action, this issue was one of the most difficult ones I faced and my understanding was not opened up to what the matter truly was, to a certainty of knowledge which I could not doubt. Except there was a night I was writing down this chapter in this notebook. It was a Sabbath night, the sixth, in the month of the prime Rajab in the year 633. So this is about four, four years before he died. So very much at the end of his life. Um, and you can be sure that so many visions that came to him, but even someone like him had to wait for many, many years for these visions. The grammatical annexation of the creation to action, that is I creation, give the action. So how do you attribute action, the giving, to me if I'm creation, or is it to God? And so how do you do that? It was not for me purely separated to one of either side, that is, am I doing this or is God doing this? And it was difficult for me to see the distinction between the acquisition, which a people argue for, that is the mutazila, and the created capacity, which another people argue for, those are the ashara. Then the true halted me to learn with a sight-based kashf, a discovery of his first creation, the first created being, the one which no created being preceded, as there was only God. And he said to me, is there here any matter bestowing confusion or perplexity? I said, no. He said to me, this is the way it is for the whole of what you see, all the new things. None of them makes an impression, nor does any, anything in creation make an impression. It is I who create the things with the secondary means, not by the secondary means. That is, the secondary means go along with what God is creating, but they're not done by the secondary means. They all come into being based on my command. I create the blowing in Jesus, making the clay bird alive, and I create the coming into being in the bird. So both. I said to him, then it is there for you yourself you are addressing with your imperative. So when you say do and do not do, it is you yourself you are addressing with your imperative. He said to me, when I raise up to your view some command, adhere to courtesy. Indeed, with the presence, the hadrat, she does not put up with any disputer. I said to him, this is exactly what we are admit in this chapter. In other words, this is exactly what I was trying to write down in this chapter. But who is the disputer and who is the courteous one? You are the creator of courtesy and disputation. So if you created the disputer, there is certainly the dominion of disputation. And if you created the courteous, there is certainly the dominion of courtesy. He said, it is so. So here, when the Quran is recited and listen, I said, that is up to you. Create hearing so I may hear and create listening so I may listen. And then addressing you now is only what you created. He said to me, I create only what I know will be. And I know only what the known is square against. So to God belongs the final argument. I have already taught you this in what came before. So adhere to this as a vision. There's nothing else. Rest from your agitating thoughts. You will not feel safe until tasking the do and the don't is severed. And it will not be severed until you pass along and leave behind the bridge which spans this world to the gates of the garden. Then the people's worship will be essentially so. Dati, automatic.
not from a command or a pro prohibition, including obligatory, recommended, forbidden, or disliked. And God speaks the true, and who is the guide to the way? So once the bridge is traversed, and at that moment, the body is buried in the earth, the spirit has passed along and traversed the bridge, at that moment, worship becomes complete, automatic, essential. And there's no more do this and don't do that. And at that moment, the womb relationships buried in the earth are supporting the actions of the company of helpers for whom Allah is Shakur, intensely thankful. Uh, let me just make sure, yeah, I had to make sure we're kind of okay on time wise. So, so we've had splitting before, so we and we have some more splitting here. Let's if you look down at the bottom, uh, we have the splitting of this of the curtain from the what's behind the curtain and what's in the curtain. So, what's the projection, uh, the projector projecting? And so, we have there is nothing his likeness, there's nothing like him. And this applies for that side of the curtain. On this side of the curtain, there is nothing like his projected likeness. So this is where Ibn Arabi takes the, the verse, Lesa Kamithli Shayan, and reads it both ways, because it's, it has two different ways of reading. One is, there is nothing like him. And the other is, there is nothing like his mytho, his projected image, his projected likeness. And so we're seeing the split between there's nothing like him on that side and there's nothing like his projected likeness on this side. And we've also seen how the verse that awal, he is the first, uh, also applies to the human being, the first and the last. And we're also the last. And then who is visible, the, the Zahir, but we are also visible and who is invisible, and we are also invisible. So there are th these truths are, are split truths. They, they apply to both sides of the curtain, apply to both sides of the curtain. And the curtain then, the barzakh, the membrane, is the place where thankfulness takes place. Ibn Arabi says thankfulness is in this membrane. So he writes here, the station, this station, has a correlation only to the realm of the intermediating membranes, the curtains, the shadow play curtains. And this realm is the Jabarut. In order to encompass the two extremes, the seen on this side of the curtain and the unseen on that side. The divine names are a membrane between us and the one named. They have a view to who, given that they are names belonging to who, and they have a view to us, where they provide in us effects attributed to the one named, should be named, e.g. the effect of life from the living. Recognize the one named, and you recognize us. So if you can recognize one side of that, you can recognize the other side. So, we're going to look now also about how thankfulness and love, as in the Allahi, uh, go hand in hand. They are together. And so the, the, for Ibn Arabi, the, the teaching of love is that when you love, then you become what you love. And this works both ways, but it works from our perspective. It works of that when God loves us, when I love them, I become the hearing with which they hear. And then Ibn Arabi, in his poetry, in the chapter of love, he says, I am the one I love, and the one I love is I. And so this is when you, if you look at the, your beloved, you see things from the sight of the beloved. So if, you're, if your beloved loves the sun, the hot, hot weather, then you love the hot weather, even if your nature doesn't love hot weather. And so this is because you're seeing things from the, the eyes of your beloved. And so Ibn Arabi also then writes the other one, I am the darling boy and I am the beautiful girl. And so the, 
the beloved, you become the beloved. You see what the beloved sees. You want what the beloved wants. You enjoy what the beloved enjoys. So this is this uh, teaching of love. And Ibn Arabi has this passage uh, in the chapter of love. He says, and he's telling the story with Una Nuna Mystery. Um, and so one of them, so that part of the story comes out. He said, I would love for you to, to describe this degree for me. What is the discre discre of degree of love? And, this, and the answer is, the ones who love God, he splits their hearts for them. So back to the splitting. So they see the inaccessible and sublime majesty of God by means of the light of the hearts. So with this splitting, instead of seeing all one, you see that there's this and there is something else elsewhere. And so there is God seen and God unseen. And so the splitting of the heart enables you to see, to have a subject object situation going on. So they can see the inaccessible and sublime majesty of God by means of the light of their hearts. So it's like we talked about when the fish in the, in the ocean, uh, does the fish see water? Well, you can't see water when you're in the water. So the hearts have to be split so that the seen and the unseen become perceptible. Then their bodies begin to become this world based and their spirits veil based and their intellects sky based, circulating amid the rows of the angels and witnessing these matters with certain knowledge. They worship him with their fullest capacity, loving him, not hoping for the garden and not fearing the fire. Then the youth burst into a cry in which was his soul. We say, Bernardi says, the speaker was one of the Arafim because he cited something which proves that. And this is the three titles. There are no others in existence. Consider what he said. We'll look at just one of these titles. The first title, the bodies are this world based. You see, he said, and in the earth, God, and in the earth, God. So, of course, he would leave for you some of his truths, the one who is with you wherever you are in this world. Yes, the human being is a gathered together whole of the universe, and he, the universe, is only the human being's body. You see, who is closer to him than the jugular vein? So who is the body-based irk? Irk means a root, a vein, a source. If he went along all of you instead of just the root vein, this would be less complete in state. It's a very unusual clause, but we'll just leave it at that for now. But the idea of the irk, of this jugular vein, this root, this source from which all this is coming. And so back to this thesis, if I could give that again. Uh, trying to put everything together, God is intensely thankful for the integrated person and company of helpers, the perfect humanities, behind whom he acts, so they do more along his way, the Sabil, extending aid while exposing that it is God who gives in a co-partnership while they are walking or buried in the earth, their souls having crossed the bridge of this world which is the vast earth, which is their body, God proceeding along a way, a sabil and a way closer to you than the root vein, closer to you than the jugular vein. And this company of helpers and this intense thankfulness, shakur, that God is intensely thankful. So God is intensely thankful for the company of helpers. And this I, I began seeing when I, the, I knew that I, it was time years and years ago, uh, not, well, I guess now it's been seven, eight years, oh my goodness, eight years since I decided I will do nothing but translate Ibn Arabi, nothing but translate the Futuhat. And uh, so I went along, along for quite a while. Um, and uh, at, at some point, uh, a lot of events took place and I, I met with Sheikh Afaria and suddenly there was a company of helpers. And this company of helpers uh, has been beautifully and wonderfully uh, supportive and encouraging all along this way. And uh, to just mention one of them, Rowan, who's in France, he's the editor. And uh, he, uh, I, I, we 
he tries to get on Zoom, but he can't get on somehow. So who knows why? But what he'll do is uh, he's, he calls it chipping away. I and mean, if you imagine the statue of David, I give him the, the marble, huge marble block. And in there somewhere, there's a statue of David. And he chips away until, like the, the joke says, until everything that doesn't look like the statue of David is, is, is chipped away. And then what is left is this beautiful thing. And what we quite clearly see is that there is a perfect translation on the other side of the screen. And so this company of helpers, what we are trying to do is make the best, uh, the closest approximation of that perfect translation on this side of the curtain. And uh, it's, it can be very physically or visual. Uh, there was one place where Rowan said, there's some kerning problem here. There's the, these two letters are somehow too close together. There's a problem going on here. So I go into those two letters and I open them up just a tiny, tiny bit. And the moment I open them up a tiny bit, the entire page rearrange, no more hyphenated words. And the who, you know, the who, I have that long uh, leg, that long wing. The who's wing suddenly shifted and came over the line above, which was the name Muhammad sallallahu So the wing of the who gently, embrace the M of the Muhammad Sallallahu So at that moment, you realize that this company of helpers is finding ways to make the perfect translation on that side come into this side. And so this is back to the idea of the Sabil of Allah, that this way of God. And so when we work together and we're, and we're feeding people, uh, and this langar, this this is of course the picture is from the Golden Temple in Amritsar. It's just an amazing place. If you ever have the chance, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. You have thousands of people working together to bring food to the people who need it. And the the Sufi shrines often have langar as well. And it's and in fact, the you go to the the, the Sufi shrine to because you know that. By doing so, by asking that God will be grateful and thankful to you and will give you more. And so we take this as coming from the hand of God. Remember that passage, uh, we don't take it as coming from the hand of the person who's dead and buried in that tomb. We're taking it because that person wants us to take it from the hand of God. So even in this world, when we're walking around, when we give something, we want to give it from the hand of God. And so even more so, the saints uh, want to give it from the, the hand of God. So we, they, they give it it's from the hand of God. We thank God. Then God is intensely thankful to us and gives us more. And so this, we get into this beautiful, positive, uh, what do they call it, virtuous uh, feedback loop that we do what is intensely loved and desired and thankful and made thankful for God. And then we so that we will do more of it, we do more of it, and we are then more intensely thankful for doing that more, and then we do more of it, and we end up moving like this. And we see these, this company of helpers getting support from far beyond their individual abilities. So this help that comes from far beyond one's individual abilities comes from uh, the ground, the, the earth in which uh, the greats are, and the earth in which the other greats are now still walking. This is where, uh, this is where the sabil of Allah, the way of God, takes place. This way is closer than the jugular vein, um, and it is in the earth God. So in the earth God from Quran. And so this is... Uh, it's, we're not looking at something esoteric or, or hidden or secret or distant or abstract. It's in the earth God. And this is how the, the way of God is done. It's done by the company of helpers who thank God and do things. And then God is intensely thankful to them. So, alhamdulillah, rabbil I think I've told most of the stories. So, yeah, there are lots of Rowan stories, the editor, lots of stories about him that we'll have to tell one day. So, and he says he'll be listening whether his ears start burning. So we'll see. Okay, thank you very much. So.
Okay, so I uh, so so please, if there's any uh, ideas, comments, experiences, we're ready. And there's Habiba has just joined. Alhamdulillah. I have a question, if I may. Yes, yes, go ahead. Thank you. I have a couple of questions, if I may, if, if that's okay. I just wanted to understand a little more about the, the section where you were talking about, um, um, you know, um, how much it's me and how much it's God when doing something. Um, I wondered if you could open that Pull that a little bit, please. And my second question is about thankfulness, but which I can go to afterwards. Yeah, the 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 question of annexation—that's the the Arabic uh, term for grammatical terms. Uh, when you say my action, uh, you're you're correlating action to yourself, and then we say God's action. You're correlating action to God, and so the whole question of how you linguistically and sort of in real life attribute things is a very important question and so Ibn Arabi will go to all of the um, the verses where where these these ideas are very much um, shaken up so that we can be shook shook up and the the one verse he goes to most often probably is you did not throw when you threw but God threw and so Ibn Arabi says, so you did not throw. So he negates the entity of Muhammad, so he, he, negates, he negates you. you. There's no entity that could throw. You did not throw. When you threw, now he affirms the entity uh, and affirms the action of throwing when you threw. And then what God threw, that shifts everything to somewhere else. So it's a, it's a threefold logic, or, or it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not... Uh, yes or no it's a yes no but or it's a and just the way yes no but is also how we say it's you it's not you it's not not you when you look in the mirror your image is you and then you say but that's i'm over here and that image is over there so it's not me and then you say well on the other hand it's not not me so there have to be three hands for this one so it's it's you it's not you and it's not not you so this is the whole question of, of attribution. It, Ibn Arabi is saying in his vision, what he's getting is that the vision was that, look at the mist. Here's this, here's this nothing there right now. And, and there's God and there's this mist. And can, is there any confusion about who's in charge, who's doing things, how things are happening? Um, you know, and at that place, there is no question. And so for Ibn Arabi, this, the, the vision late in his life was that there is no question. This is what's happening. And then, and so when you see things happening, you realize that they are, act, that they are, they are God doing things through, God doing things through, and God doing things, having his way, his sabil, his way being done through these people. And these people then are the company of helpers. And when God sees his things being done through this company of helpers, he's intensely thankful. And his intense thankfulness has, gives us more to do more of those things. So this is how it works. Uh, so we looked at, and that's how love works, how, how something that is distant becomes something that is close, how something that is other becomes the self. So when he says, I am the one I love and the one I love is I, how something opposite becomes, some, becomes you. And then you had, you had a follow-up, a question about thankfulness. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the co-partnership uh, that you mentioned. Uh, so I'm just trying to remember the, the, um, the bit that you talked about. So, so does that mean that, let's say, for example, you are writing the Kotohat and there are, there's a team that's helping you to do that. So, um, so, um, so is there a partnership with, with you and God? In, yeah, maybe you could open that, unfold that a little bit too, if that's okay. Yes. Well, what what's what's happening is that the uh, the that the company of helpers comes about, and they're all different uh, 
in this in the in the particular example of the Futu Hut, uh, there's in a sense there's one translator, there's an editor, and then there's all of these people who are showing what needs to be done, telling me what needs to be done. Um, for instance, our uh, Baki up here in her very strong French way tells me what needs to be done and so uh, and that's and that's that's the company of help. How dare and they, you! <laughs> and for years for years they have supported this effort uh, monthly efforts in Santa Fe I'm sure met, most of the weeks most of the times that we've had these sessions they'd say what the heck is this guy talking about but they stick with it and they say, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And so, and the moment this began to take place, I left being this individual person who has only my own abilities into something far, far greater. And that's why they call, you know, crowdsourcing, all these kinds of things uh, that there, you get, it gets far bigger than one, one can imagine. And then when it gets uh, bigger that way, then you, then the shakur, the intensely thankful, comes about. And so then more is given. And so, the, so every day I go, I, I, there'll be a, something I, I, have, I see or do, which I had no idea that I could do, do that. There are words that I've, or there are hadith that I've heard probably 30 years ago. Suddenly I remember it today because today is when Ibn Rabi is talking about that subject. So, uh, and so watching this, and this is why, you know, people who are in these companies of helpers, they'll tell you what a blessing it is, because as when you're in a working for a greater good with a company of helpers, uh, you have so much more energy than you thought you could ever uh, muster before. So, alhamdulillah. So that's when the co-partnership from God comes in, you know, giving you more blessing to, to and, and more um, energy and more, um, knowledge and more eagerness to do more. Is that correct? Right. And, and, and so from behind the curtain, the desire is for the way to take place on this side of the curtain. And this side of the curtain, are, we are the elements or the puppets that are available to be used to make things happen that are the way of God. So from God's perspective, there's an intense thankfulness that these shadows are willing and loving to do the things that will make his way come forth. So, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Can I, hello, sir. <laughs> How are you? It's Alex here. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> alhamdulillah. Good. Good. I just wanted to add something to that, if you don't mind, if, if, if I may indulge. <laughs> So I just wanted to give it a take from um, uh, the Heisenberg uncer uncertainty principle in quantum in quantum physics, and um, so where where you have the uncertainty of uh, recognizing a particle or a wave, uh, you're you're caught in two into two sort of dimensions, let's say, yeah, and so you're either in one or the other, but you can't be in both. So the whole the whole business of um, this separation, which of course, you know, um, somebody like uh, uh, Halaj, you know, who was um, executed by Sharia because he said, I am God, <laughs> you know. And so by Sharia, he was executed uh, for saying that out aloud. Uh, but, but really boils down to, boils down to the witnessing uh, that we are we are involved in and the observation. I hope I hope it's not too complicated, <laughs> but the simplicity is just witnessing, which is the shahada that we take. And in that shahada, you can experience both states, if you if you will. You know, the la ilaha and the illallah, the higher and the the the, the, the lower consciousness. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that and that's why. Uh, Ibn Arabi, the, the way to the way to explore these this being in two places at once and and so on is is through poetry because when you write in poet in Arab poetry Arabic poetry no one can argue with you and say that's uh, blasphemous or something like that so you kind of have to run into poetry and also then poetry because uh, prose is very much subject object 
So, so in prose and with subject and object, you to say I am God is is you know I am God. I mean, it, the prose has certain rules and language has certain rules. But if you say that poetically, then you can say I am the one I love and I and the one I love is I. Then now we all understand what's going on. So and so that's this is the constraints of language and then the constraints of 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 physics to, to have to blow open classical physics and say that, that, that that's too constrained to talk about things that do actually happen. So, thank you. I have a question, Eric. Um, I was wondering in terms of the splitting and this kind of veiling and separation, um, is there a relationship between, if we think about how, if, if, how, how does Ibn Arabi talk about yeah, accounts for actions of evil or actions of um, violence in this world. Is it a, is it a, is it a space of the bazaar? Is it a, a space of kind of shadow play? How does that work in relationship to kind of that type of uh, bad deed or of action? Yeah, one of the ways Ibn Arabi looks at this, the whole question, and he looks at it very often because it is, it really is a, a very, a, a very important place to be to find understanding and to find insight. And one of the ways he looks at that is that the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, I was sent to complete the virtues. I was sent to complete the noble virtues or the generous characteristics. And Ibn Arabi says what happened is that uh, there, there we have these characteristics. We have uh, generous characteristics and we have mean characteristics or bad characteristics. And uh, like bad characteristics or mean characteristics are envy and jealousy, things like that. So envy is when someone has something and I want that and I don't want that person to have it and I want to take it away from them. These are called mean uh, characteristics. And Ibn Arabi says that the Prophet ﷺ came to, uh, to fulfill all of the virtuous characteristics. So he took every characteristic and those which were seen, seen to be mean and showed how they are to be made generous. So envy, he says there, that envy is when your neighbor is reciting the Quran all night and you say, I envy my neighbor. I wish I too had uh, such a memory to be able to recite the Quran all night. So this is an, en an envy which is praiseworthy. This is a, a, a virtuous characteristic. Um, then uh, the, the, the person who, who is, greedy for something greedy is is a, is a mean characteristic however one person was coming into uh to the rows of the prayer in the mosque and and so pushed his way in and, and came in and, and got straight into the the prayer into the prayer row and the prophet said uh so here's what you should do instead uh but uh bless you god bless you for your greed for the prayer so that it's being greedy for the prayer then is a virtuous characteristic. So all of the things which uh, we think of as mean, uh, there is a twist, a way to make them good. And this is tasrif, uh, saraf, tasarafa. Um, it's to how to turn things to make them good. And so this turning things to make them good. This is, so of course there's the presence of, of envy and greed, but they have no, as mean virtues, uh, mean characteristics, they have no solid reality. Uh, they, because they can be switched or turned into good things. So anything that can be turned into something good uh, doesn't have an independent, absolute uh, existence. So therefore, the things that we see around us that are mean or envy and envy and greed and things like that, they have no independent uh, existence. They have accidental or happenstance existence. They happen to be there and they could all be turned uh, with a turn and make them good. And good has a real essential reality. So alhamdulillah. Can I ask if, um, and following up with that, if no one else has got a question right now, is, the, for example, if we were thinking about the turn 
um, of that kind of dual or not, not duality as you mentioned last week, but a polarity. If one uh, an act of um, bad deed is that an can we consider that as an opening or an unveiling um, to see this polarity of the other side? Yes, yes. The the opening to be able to to be able to see what's seen and then to know what's unseen. So uh, we have from the beginning of uh, Alif Lam Mim, we have the the those who can have faith and certain knowledge of what is unseen. So we talked about that the heart sees the incoming divine tajalli, the incoming divine um, manifestation and this, and this brilliant radiance. And the heart then knows that the eyes have not seen that because it came from inside from the other place into us. And so seeing something and knowing that the, that there is the unseen, this, this that is in a sense seeing or perceiving the polarity. Now, now you can, now you know that there is there are two sides because you see the one side. Um, and Karima here has just said also that when you look at the question of Tawhid, that there's only one really, but unless you have the illusion of two, nothing at all could ever happen because Tawhid, in a way, it's back into fish in the ocean. That's, that's one kind of Tawheed. The other kind of Tawheed is when you get out of the ocean and say, oh, there's only one ocean. And so uh, Tawheed, in a sense, requires two, because you have to step out and see that something is one. Because if you are one, then you don't see that you are one. And so Tawheed is the second step that says that there is one. And so in a sense, uh, uh, this goes back to the idea of akal and nafs, so the, the intellect and the soul. So the soul knows the one. The intellect has to step out and say, oh, now that I'm not one anymore, I can look back and say, oh, there is one. So the nafs lives the one, and the akal has to step back and get away from the one to see that there is one. So these are, these are two different ways of understanding the world, or coming, coming at the world. Yeah, so this is, and this is the, uh, what comes from, from God is, is good, and what, and what is attributed to yourself is bad. And so the things that, that can be, only real things can be attributable to God, and these accidental happenstance things that could go one way or the other, they are attributed to us. So if I take envy, which is attributable either way, and I take it and say, I'm envious and I want that person not to have that thing, then that's attributed to me. That's my envy. But the same envy is, oh, I, uh, I wish that I could recite Quran all night. That envy is good and that's attributed to God. So if I do be able to recite Quran all night, I thank God for giving me that because it came from God. And so, and if I am a miserable, mean person feeling about that uh, with envy, then that's, that's with me, that's attributed then to me. So, so yeah, so definitely, I got, just got that from the chat. That's exactly where this is coming from, how this is working. Okay. I have one question, if you don't mind, Salam um, Alaikum. Yes, uh, in Kitabul Asfar, uh, Sheikh talk about this Safar uh, al and uh, there he also mentions Fatr. But the interesting thing is that he combines two words in defining the journey of creation. And he says, after quoting Surah Fusilat, Bil Fatq wal Fatr. So uh, that the creation is in a way from fatq, which loosely translated is disruption, and fatr as a split. And I found your commentary very insightful. But could you enlighten me a bit more on this relationship between uh, disruption and a splitting, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, this, the, the, where we looked at for splitting, back to this, the oneness, um, and, and splitting is as having something take place in two different places. 
Um, so having something come into being in two places. Um, and so the splitting, we see it, it's, so it's the metaphor, it's the image that we use for all of these things. Um, <laughs> splitting in reproduction, splitting in um, the first thing that splits our hearing is B and it is. The first thing that splits our, our intestines is the, the food that we eat on, if, on iftar when we are uh, opening or splitting um, for at sunset. So all of these are, are the images of splitting. In order for something to happen, splitting uh, takes place. So Adam Eve, this one clay lump, is divided into two, is split, so that uh, the reproduction can take place. And so, uh, and the split is back to the two eyes that Ibn Arabi talks about. See everything with two eyes. The one eye can see. If if you see, if you want to see depth depth perception, you have to see something and know that there's something behind. And this is what something infants are learning to do. Infants are learning to uh, what called object permanence, right? That, that when, someone, when someone goes behind the wall, they're still there. And then they come out and they say peekaboo. And that's delightful because you are learning and loving to see the split that their God is seen and God is unseen. And so infants know this. And so they are delighted when you come behind the wall and say, I've been here all along. And they say, I know you've been there all along because I know that there, I have certain knowledge of the unseen. And then we grow up and we forget object permanence and divine permanence and things like that. But uh, that, that is the split, being able to see what my heart sees, my eyes don't see, it's God. What my heart doesn't see, but my eyes see, it's God. And to be able to say both are God. So Ibn Arabi keeps telling us, when you see everything as God, you have no problem. Your problem is when you see some things as God, some things not God. Then you're getting into a, a, a different situation. So splitting, splitting the vision, splitting our knowledge to see two things at once. Uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, things like that, to know two things at once. And, and to see uh, that the God that is seen and the God that is unseen. At the same time. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thank you so much. It's, we've had our, a wonderful hour. I, uh, it's so good to see people here. Thank you. Alhamdulillah.